Hey, I got a couple requests to paint simple grimdark imperial fists and lamenters as well. Now the lamenters are bright yellow, so painting those grimdark style is going to be very challenging and I figured I'd do some imperial fists first to get a bit of a handle on the yellow color. Here, check it out. So here you can see him rotating around. Uh, as usual with my simple grimdark painting style, I just dry brush and wash and that's it. A little bit of detailing to paint in the little relics, a belt, the krila and so on. But most of it is just uh, achieved by dry brushing and a bit of battle damage as well. Let's start. So the first layer is going to be Chokero Orange. And I'm applying this with a dry brush and I'm kind of making dry brushing motions, but I'm just making sure that paint is pretty much everywhere. Only the really the deepest recesses won't get any paint this way, they'll stay black. And the reason I'm starting with Jokero orange instead of yellow is that I want to have a bit of a mottled look on my miniatures. I think it gives them a nice Grimdak dark texture. And starting with a slightly darker color than what the end result will be, will give you a bit of a shading effect. So the lower lying layers will be a bit darker than the ones on the top. And as you can see, I'm doing this quick, I'm doing this dirty. I just keep making vertical strokes so that you get a bit of a brushed on dry brush effect but I'm just slathering it on and I don't care if it gets on parts of the model that are not going to be yellow later on. And here he is all messy, nasty with a very simple layer of Jokero orange. It's not covering at all as you can see on the shoulder pad, it's just blotchy. And now I'm going over this with a bit of a dry brush of Averland Sunset. And here I'm dry brushing more than I did with the Chokero layer. So that means I have less paint on my brush. I really only make a you know, striking motion. How do you say this? Going up and down, making sure I hit all the edges, all the trim, and make sure that I don't get it all in the recesses. And I'm going all over the model with this. And again, it doesn't matter if it doesn't cover, and it doesn't matter if you hit parts of the model that you don't want to have yellow. We'll clean it up all of this later. And here he is with the Averland Sunset dry brush done. It still looks messy, uh, there's still Jokero orange visible and in the deepest recesses there's still black visible from the primer. So now I'm going over everything with Seraphim Sepia. Uh, this is a yellowish wash, a sepia wash and it will tie the two layers together a bit and it gives a nice yellow shade in all the recesses and I'm applying this in quite heavy amounts it's really slathering it on drown the model in seraphim sepia and after that we'll see about highlighting this again I just wanted to give you a quick view of what it looks like while the Seraphim sepia is drying. And as you can see, I'm really putting a lot, a lot on here. And that's fine, it will pull, it will give a very deep shadow over there. And after we're highlighting this, it'll look fine. Don't worry about applying too much of your shade. And here's the Imperial Fist with the Seraphim sepia wash dry. Now I'm lightly dry brushing with some more Averland Sunset and I'm doing this to get some highlights. So I'm taking care to do this on the top of the model where I would imagine the light would fall, such as the shoulder pads, the top of the backpack over here. And I'm adding some to his hands and uh, bit parts of the legs that also stick out. This is just to get a bit of a highlight and as you can see, I'm dry brushing it on not bothering with edge highlighting or being very accurate with my brush here. I just want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. You guys make this channel possible. Thanks so much for your support. And if you're watching this, please hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Let's keep painting. So the highlight is done and it's time for some detail work. I'm going to start with some corn red on the Aquila on the chest. And I'm sorry, but this is hard to see on the camera, but there's so little space to get my brush in. I'm going to have to obscure it while I'm painting. Sorry about that. So the Aquila is red, trust me, even if you can't see it. And I also did this little purity seal in corn red. So now it's time for a baton black. And I'm going to do the uh, joints in his armor in a baton black and the trim of his shoulder pads as well. 
And if you've seen any of my other videos, such as the Grimdark uh, Primaris Chaplain, where I'm painting the armor black, you know that I usually don't use a bad and black when I want black on my beads. I use gray and I build it up with layers of wash and some dry brushing as well. But because these surfaces are so small, you're probably not going to see much of a difference between using a bad and black and building up from gray. So I'm just going with a bad and black. It also speeds it up a lot and you spend enough time on the rest of the armor to make it look yellow. No need to spend so much more time on all the details. So just a bad and black, it is. So the black is done, done the weapon, the armor trim, his belt buckle, the joints in his armor and of course the pistol handle. And now I'm going for the leather and I'm using Rhinox hide to paint all the pouches and the belt that he's wearing. Now Rhinox hide is a really nice reddish brown color. It's good for your grim dark leather needs. And you can shade it quite easily with some non oil after you put this on. So the leather is done and if you look closely at that little pouch you can see I kept the Rhinox hide quite well diluted and this means that it kind of works like a contrast paint. It goes into the recesses and the edge of this pouch that's the yellow still shining through so you get a little bit of a highlight and after this I would only just shade it with some non oil and you're done with the leather. But now first I'm using some rock art flesh for the scraps of parchment on the purity seal and I'm also going to use this for the skin on his face. I think that rock art flesh with a wash of Agrax Earthshade is a really really good way to paint simple grim dark skin on your marines and probably other humanoids as well. So I put a single layer of rock art flesh on the skin and on the purity seals. I might do a second layer later on to cover it really well, but I saw I just forgot about the hair. So I'm going to do the hair in Rhinox hide, just like I did with the belt and the pouches. It's easy to just use the same colors for these details and painting it brown rather than black makes it yeah, stand a bit more apart from all the black details that he has on his armor. So just a single layer of Rhinox hide on the hair, trying to make sure I don't paint on the skin, and that will do. So there he is, hair completely done in Rhinox hide. Now for the last bit of detailing, I'm gonna do a lead belcher on all the metallic parts of the gun. And I also like to do the vents and stabilizers on his backpack in lead belcher, just to break up that uh, solid armor color on the back. But you can leave out the vents and so on if you don't want to spend the time on that detail. And the lead belcher is done. So the vents on his back and the gun all got some lead belcher details. And I said it would be the last detail paint, but I forgot about the little gold that he has. This little plaque, the uh, little icon on his gun and the relic that's hanging off his belt. And now for the gold, I'm using uh, Brassy Brass Brass by Vallejo, but you can use uh, Rune Lord Brass from Citadel if you don't want to use Vallejo paints. They're pretty much the same and they work the same as well. I'm just using Vallejo because I couldn't get the Rune Lord Brass anymore at the moment. You know, we're having a lockdown here, it's hard to get all the paints you want. So I'm going with this over all the gold details. Now if you're picking a gold, don't get Retributor armor or Auric armor. These gold colors are very, very yellow. So I don't think they would really stand out against the yellow armor. Either go brass, which is a, I guess a bit duller gold, or go for something like Gehenna's gold, which is more orange and more reddish gold. Otherwise you just don't see the difference between the yellow armor and the yellow gold. So the detailing is done. He has the brassy brass brass on all the gold uh, little details. And looking at the model, I think he requires a bit more shading. The Seraphim CPR works really well to get a good yellow color, but I'm going over the model with uh, some Agrax Earthshade to really darken the wash and really get some more shadows going on. Now, this is very late in the stage of this model and you should do this right after the Seraphim sepia wash, I think, because now we're going washing this and then I might highlight it again with some April and Sunset, just to get a bit more highlight again on the uh, edges and the trims. But we'll see where this goes. You know, this is miniature painting, you don't always know what the 
result is going to be before you start and it's easy to paint over your mistakes and fix them. So I'm just going to put Agrax Earthshade all over his armor but I'm also going to shade some of the details. I'm putting this on everything except for the lead belcher parts because Agrax Earthshade on lead belcher makes it look a bit rusted. And I'm not going to put this on the purity seal either. I mean on the scripts of parchment. I'm going to do those with Seraphim Sepia later on. But I am going to put this on the skin, uh, all the armor, the gold trim and the leather of his pouches and his belt. So here he is, the Agrax wash is still drying. I think he looks better now. He has a bit more shade in all the recesses. We're just gonna let it dry and in the meantime I'm going over the uh, scraps of parchment here with some Seraphim Sepia to give them a bit of a yellowish look. And then I'll do the lead belt parts with some non oil after this. So Seraphim Sepia is done. And now it's time for non-oil on lead belcher. And I'm also going just over the black parts, just in case I might get some variation in shading in the lower recesses. But I try to work neatly with this wash, and that's always a bit tough with washes. I'll just do this golden detail here with non-oil as well, even though I've done the other gold details with Agrax. It's just easier, works faster this way. And don't forget the lead belcher parts on his backpack. They need to get a wash of non-oil as well. Okay, the Agrax Earth Shade is dry. And now he's just a little too dark maybe, or rather it's just that he's lacking any real highlights. And so I'm going to apply a little bit of Avalon Sunset, lightly dry brushed on the top parts and the ridges of the armor. And the good thing is, if I go over the Abaddon Black trim, I can just apply some Abaddon Black and nobody will see the difference. For the other parts of the details, the armor, almost all of it is just a single layer of a detail uh, color and then a wash of the uh, non-oil over it. So it's very easy to fix any mistakes, which is why I'm not too sad that I have to do the highlight again. Just that little bit of Avril and Sunset We'll give him a little bit of a highlight and I think that will just make it look that little bit better. As you can see, I'm going over the top of the backpack, over his shoulder pads. If he had a helmet, that would get a little bit of a dry brush as well. And then here on the back of the legs, because they're sticking out, they would catch a little bit of light. I want to get some on the edges, on the trim of the knee pad. Just a little bit is enough. Like that. That's all you need to get a little bit of highlight. Get some on the knee pad itself. And just work as light as you can. And you can always add more, but it's very hard to fix it if you add too much. Okay, the highlight is done. It's just subtle enough that it's there, but it doesn't really overwhelm the model. And uh, as you can see here on the side of the backpack, I put a little bit too much. So here's how you can fix that. You don't want to go over it again, wash it all and everything. So instead, I just dab on some lead belcher and now it's battle damage. And we're going to continue with the lead belcher, just dry brushing edges, uh, dabbing it on places that would get scuffed a lot. So the toes of his boots, the knee pads, you know, I can imagine Space Marine occasionally getting down on one knee to fire their ball to it a little bit more accuracy. The knee pads get scuffed, the trim around the knee pads, the feet probably hitting rocks and other you know, debris on the battlefield. So I'm doing some extra damage on those. And as you can see, I'm just gently brushing it. There's almost no paint on my brush. It's pretty much like a dry brush. You know, I had some, some of those edges over there. It's also a good way to give a little bit of a highlight to your model. Now, the lead belt will look like it's battle damage, but it's at the same time a highlight. Now I'll just keep going and just dabbing some on the shoulder pad and go all over the model with this. And, important one as well, I'll dry brush the weapon just very lightly, going only from the top to give it a bit of a highlight as well and to give it a bit of a warm look at the same time. 
Yeah, now it looks proper worn. And as you can see, that blotch of yellow that I accidentally put there, it's gone. It looks like proper battle damage now. So don't be afraid to make some mistakes. You can always fix them later in mini painting. Now, before I base him, I always paint the base uh, black. And this is just to cover up any of the paints that may have gotten on the base. Uh, depending, I'm still not sure what sort of base material I'm going to use. And depending on what I'm doing, it might shine through. And that would really be a very, very nasty thing because getting basing material off is a lot harder than painting over a mistake you made on the beanie. So just paint the base black, do the trim as well, and then we'll start basing. So the base is black, and for the Imperial Fist, I'm going with Astro Granite Debris for his basing material. I think this uh, gray works well with the paint scheme, but it's also just what else are you going to use? You could do Martian soil, which is very red, which I think would detract from the model a bit. Or do a green, which also doesn't really go well with the yellow paint scheme. A dark brown, like a mud, could work maybe, but then again, yellow is already kind of on that side of the color spectrum, you know, brown, orange. So I think Astro Granite Debris will work. And then if you have maybe some small greenish tufts of grass or something in there, I think that would be a good base for Imperial Fist. So the Astro Granite Debris is still drying. And in the meantime, I'm just going to dust his boots a little with Eshin Gray. And I'm doing this with a dry brush and just a little bit of paint and I'm moving the brush from the ground up onto his armor, especially of course his boots, the feet, the legs a bit, all of that to get a bit of impression that he's been walking through the dust for a while already. It really ties the model together with the base and it makes him look more part of the base and not just glued on top. So the base is dry and now for the final touch I'm going to shade it with some non-oil. This will just dull it down a bit, make it a bit darker of course, but it also gives a bit more uh, shading and a bit more texture in your base and makes it look just that little bit better. And after that, the model is done. And that's the Imperial Fist Intercessor done. I think this is a good and fast way to paint them and have a good, nice yellow color that still looks grim dark. You know, it looks dented, scratched, uh, dust on his boots and still ready to go for some more. Now as always you can find links in my description to Instagram, Facebook and uh, Patreon as well. And if you like this video then don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more grimdark painting videos. Thanks for watching, see you next time.